Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. I am your host, Arlen Robinson, and today we have a very special guest, David Feynman, who is a a co-founder of Viral Ideas Marketing, along with Zach Medina, which creates online video content for clients ranging from small businesses to Fortune 500 brands. The company's mission is to help brands create to inspire. Uh, David began his online career marketing concerts in high school on Facebook. He took a 200-person monthly concert and turned it into a 1,600-person monthly event through Facebook advertising. David went on to start the Zombie Run, which grew from zero to 35,000 participants in nine months in 16 major markets. The race was featured in Wired, Anderson Cooper, and is known nationally throughout the country. Welcome to the podcast, David. Hey, so awesome to be here. Yeah, so awesome to be here. great. Thanks for joining me. That's quite a resume you have. And uh, yeah, so you know, before we really get into it, I know we're, today we're going to be talking a little bit about video marketing, um, specifically for e-commerce businesses. But uh, yeah, you've got a diverse background. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and how you got into what you're doing today? Yeah, so so I'll kind of, I'll kind of pick things up from the from the viral ideas days. You know, I I had a, a couple companies before then. But really about three years ago, uh, we started working with some companies doing some social media management and videos and really found this awesome niche in creating video content for you know, online social media. And really built that up over the past three years, uh, made over a thousand videos. And actually through that whole process have developed out a platform called Flixation. Mm-hmm. So Flixation does uh, basically video editing on the back end for for brands. So, you know, basically we have two arms of the company and, you know, really, really built, built them both up over time through, through awesome client relationships. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that, that's awesome. And I think this episode is really timely, especially because we, I mean, we're, we're just we're literally in the age of, of video. Um, if you're not doing anything video, then, you know, you're, you're kind of, um, you know, almost in the dark ages these days because there's, that's, that's really where, where it's at. Um, you know, as far as e-commerce businesses are concerned, uh, we've got a lot of listeners that have e-commerce businesses that are always looking for ways to market their business. Now, if a business, an e-commerce business, has never done this really before and never really entered the video marketing space, uh, how, how do they really need to prepare a video marketing campaign? Where do they even begin? So we always like to say start with strategy, right? So. If you're prepping for a campaign, you want to really consider the three phases of the marketing funnel. And those are awareness, consideration, decision. So when a, when a customer is thinking about buying your product, you have to think about you know, where are they going to first become aware of you. So you know, in general, with, with modern marketing, what we're seeing is you know, a lot of people are becoming aware of products through Facebook and Facebook ads. So you know, making your first video to be something that you know, drives people towards you know, towards some sort of video that showcases your product, mm-hmm. you know, is, is really the first first place that we suggest that people start so they can start working working on building out their, their online audience. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, it really doesn't matter what it is the, the business is selling, whether they're selling, you know, women's fashions, whether they're selling um, home products, it doesn't really matter. That starting with that first video is really where it is as far as them doing some type of overview of, you know, even if they have a whole suite of products, I guess they want to focus on what are their, their main products, what are they known for, I, I take it. Exactly, you know, focusing on focusing on that set of products to, to build up an audience gotcha. and fi- figuring out exactly what piece of content to, to put there. And there's, there's a lot of different options out there for that. Uh, one resource I can drive you to, um, you know, if you're thinking about creating that first video, don't know where to get started, is to go to our site, viralideasmarketing.com slash video builder. Mm-hmm. We actually have a whole tool there that shows you, uh, you know, all the different facets of the marketing funnel and what videos fit into what part of the funnel. So that way you can start thinking about, 
you know, whatever your product might be in the e-com space, you want to start thinking about how you can build, you know, that sales narrative for yourself and build out video assets. Because, you know, like we said, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're approaching 2019, but video is going to be running the internet. It already is running the internet. Right. So if you're a brand that hasn't, hasn't started with that, it's, it's time to do it. You know, it's time to, time to you know, at least dip your toes in the water, if not go all in on it. Right, right. Now, I know one of the things that businesses are probably thinking, you know, at this point, you know, they know they need to do it. They know they're, they're probably going to get ready to get started doing something related to video, getting that first video out there, creating an overview video of their main products, their best sellers, whatever it is. They're probably thinking, OK, you know, I don't have any experience doing this. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Does, do they need to hire someone? Do, what do you suggest? Do they need to outsource this? Uh, what is your um, initial advice? Yeah, so I, I'm going to give kind of three tiers, right? You know, I, I'm obviously, a, you know, make these for a living, but there's definitely a number of ways that people can approach it depending on where people are at in the process. So the first one is do it yourself, right? And if you are going to do it yourself, you know, make sure you get yourself set up with a decent amount of baseline equipment. So, you know, Make sure you have some sort of lighting, some form of sound to pick up quality sound, and you know, and, and some some decent camera. It can even be your phone. Mm. Um, and once you do that, maybe make sure you plan out you know what video you're going to create. If you use the video builder tool that I spoke about, slash video builder mm-hmm. you can figure out what you're actually going to create, and then go out and create it. You know, for most people, th- this is actually you know once they try to get into it, it actually becomes quite a bit of a challenge. Right. So the next the next tier of that is um, what I like to call like the do it together video. Um, you know, working with a, a partner to handle that. So uh, we actually on our end we actually use software that enables us to remote into a business anywhere in the world mm-hmm. and help them be their producer. So you know we'll have them set up actually their phones and we'll have them buy some basic lighting and sound and we'll do it with them you know on site for an hour two hours and direct them on how to on how to shoot, what camera angles we can adjust the, we can adjust the lighting and everything from their phone. Mm-hmm. Um, the next tier to that would be hire a freelancer. So you know if you're if you're local if you're local to um, you know if you're local to the area you want to you want to go out there and see if you can find you know an individual or a couple of small companies to hire to to produce your video. This will give you a nice polished look. Um, finding you know finding that freelancer, but it'll mm-hmm. it won't exactly you know it won't break the bank as much. Right, right. Yeah. Then I was uh, the last tier is the high end video production where you're actually producing something, someone that's working with you on strategy, scripting, storyboarding, and taking your concept from from nothing to a reality. Um, you know, laying above it all too is you know edit the editing part of it. You know, if you're if you are doing it yourself or you are working with a freelancer, you know, making sure you have a plan in place to edit the the actual video because that's you know, in my mind, it's, that's the new coding, right? Like, if you know, you need to have a plan in place to get it edited. Whether you're using our solution, which is Fixation, or using another solution to do it, you you definitely need to have a plan to to get your video looking nice. Right, right. Yeah, I love that breakdown in the different tiers. That makes it pretty kind of sweet and simple. And I mean, these days, that just even starting at that first tier, like you said, just doing a basic video with your with your iPhone or with whatever smartphone that you have is, is really where you could easily just get started. Um, you know, before we, we, we started recording, I was telling you a little bit about our, our history at Omnistar. And, you know, we were, we were founded in 2000 and things were a little bit different back then. I mean, there was pre-smartphone where, you know, everybody just had flip phones that had the, the cheap basic cameras that had just, you know, the, yep. you know a, a horrible resolution. So it was a little bit more difficult then. And then you had to be concerned about Okay, where do you, how do you get the video file from the phone to your computer? And, you know, that was a whole, a whole other thing. These days, it is super easy. You know, everyone that has a smartphone has a video um, recording capability on there. And I think a large part of the video, and you touched on, on video production, and you touched on it, is lighting and, and sound. You know, at a, at a bare minimum, if you have halfway decent lighting and sound, you know, that, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big win for you right there. People can clearly see you, they can clearly hear you, whatever it is that you're, you know, um, saying, that's, you know, that's really half the battle from, from what I see. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you if you can if you can get your lighting and sound right, you're exactly right. You'll you'll um, you know you're through half the battle. But the other thing too is you know having a plan, and you know it it is fairly simple to to, to you know once you get the lighting and sound done to get your get your recording right. But to get your editing down is a different story. So right. you know if there's one part of the co- one part of the process that I would personally suggest outsourcing, it would be that editing. You know, find a trusted partner. Be it flexations, shameless plug, or be it you know anything else, you know any other solution, to edit, you know, right. see if that's something you can you can work out so you don't have to you don't have to be sitting there for for a ton of hours making something look great. Right, right. That that is true. That's not some great advice because once you get it together, you know, there's even some small things do, does take a little level of knowledge as far as editing. You know, like if you want to add some sounds, some background sound to it, you want to add an intro, outro, you know, those little small things that for, for a layman, somebody that's not, it doesn't have any experience with any editing tools, that can take you, you know, hours and hours to kind of figure out how to do, whereas if that's uh, something that a freelance can do in, you know, a matter of minutes, and then you really wouldn't pay that much. So that's, that's some great advice, and I would definitely recommend it as well. Um, now, of course, we, we've already established that the video marketing and creating videos is really applicable, really for almost really any e-commerce business that's pretty clear now once these businesses have created the video they've got something really nice and you know fairly polished what and want to get it out there what what really social platforms lend well to video um that you recommend we've seen the most powerful tool being facebook and instagram okay so you know running running facebook facebook video campaigns works incredibly well Mm -hmm. Um, making sure you're using that Facebook pixel. You know, if you don't know what that is, definitely give that, get a good rabbit hole down on Google uh, just to investigate that a little bit for yourself. Uh, LinkedIn video too, if you're selling if you're selling B2B, that, that works really well. LinkedIn's really pushing it right now too. Right. So you're going to get a little bit more of that organic, organic reach right now. Right. You know? um, and then, you know, simple videos, Instagram stories, right? Like, you know, we're working those every day because, a lot of the engagement on Instagram right now is happening through the stories. Mm-hmm. You know, but but really, but really, it's a matter of you know, it's not just about creating that video, editing it, planning it out. It's, it's also about that distribution. So having having a plan of you know what channels do you have as a business? You know, sit down and write out you know where your business is online, and figure out if you could plug your video into that because it might be a matter of you know making one video into a couple different versions for a couple different places if you're a different, couple different places on the web right? you know if you if you're selling your product on Amazon you might want to you might want a video on your Amazon product page or a few videos on your Amazon product page mm-hmm. so to so figure out where where you're going to distribute that video why you're going to distribute that video there and then make sure the format's right for the place it's going right right that's that's so true because all of these different platforms there's slightly different specs based on you know what what they require for the formatting so you definitely want to make um, you know, make clear on that. And one thing, uh, when I, you mentioned LinkedIn. I know LinkedIn, like you said, they're doing a big push for video. It, it's one area that is not really fully, fully saturated yet as far as video. So getting in there doing video, I think, can have a, if, if you're in the B2B space, that is, can definitely have a, a nice impact where it's not, you know, they haven't been totally just saturated with just so many videos that yours gets lost in the shuffle. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a a great thing to to consider as well. Now, whenever we talk about video and video marketing, and most people that think of video marketing, they immediately think of a viral video. You know, everybody wants to make a video that goes viral. And then, you know, I can think of a, a few that have gone viral. I know the um, company Squatty Potty, they had a viral video. That's the, the company that makes the little stool that helps you you know, eliminate and, and do the number twos in the bathroom a lot more effectively. They they really got big because they made a, a kind of a crazy um, a viral video of a unicorn that was uh, doing the number two and, and, and what was coming out was like a rainbow. And so that was one that really just kind of took off. But, you know, not everyone is going to have that magic and, and make a, an instant viral video. But are there things that a business can do to, you know, if they're really trying to push something and they, and they want to make something catchy that has a, the potential to go viral, is there certain things that they need to do to, you know, to try to make that happen? What we always have to say is go, 
Great. Think, think, a, think a little bit about who your audience is and think about going micro viral. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll tell you a little story. We, we actually have a, a client who um, they sell a device for trucks. Mm-hmm. And there's really only, you know, a couple tens of, th- you know, maybe t- let's call it tens of thousands of purchasers of this particular item in the entire country. Mm-hmm. So for them, going viral is reaching the entire list of purchasers, okay. which they have on a list already. So if, if all of them are able to watch their video and become aware of their new product, they've gone viral because gotcha. that's that's their market. So you really have to, you know, a lot of times when we're going through these campaigns, it's often oftentimes a little bit of a therapy session with, with the clients figuring out, you know, who who are who's your actual target market? A lot of, a lot of people don't know. They they think that everyone is their target. Right. In reality, you know, if you're a business that's going after everyone, you're really going after nobody because there's so many micro niches within within the world that you know if you're able to serve one, you'll you'll have a great business. So. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of focusing on on that niche and creating that video for that niche is really where virality starts to happen. Right, right, definitely. That is so true. I mean, everything you said as far as, you know, going viral really is just reaching the majority of people in your particular market. It's not everyone. I think people have a kind of a, a glamorized idea of really what going viral is. And, you know, viral isn't just, you know having your ad mentioned on the local news or anything like that, that's not, that's not really viral because, you know, yeah, you may be reaching a lot of people, but all of those people aren't necessarily your target market. So that's, that's some great advice. You know, you, you really have to narrow down who's your target and, and what would it, what, what's the goal and how many people are we trying to meet and then what what's the most effective way to do that via video. So yeah, that's a, that's some great advice. Um, now, as far as videos are concerned, I know there's a lot of elements of things that you can put into the videos as far as content is concerned. And I know you, of course, have seen your share fair of, of marketing videos um, because if you do, what, what do you feel are some elements of unforgettable videos that you've seen? Unforgettable. Um, Squatty Potty videos was is actually up there with one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, Slack put out a video. Okay, that was awesome. Um, I, I would drop that in the bucket of what's called a story testimonial. Okay. So uh, for those who aren't familiar, Slack is like a messaging app for your computer, uh, used amongst B two B B two B clients. And the video company that put it together um, is a video company called Sandwich Video. They're out in California, mm-hmm. um, and they they actually use the product. And the whole video was about them using the product. Mm. So it really, and it was, it was humorous, it was funny, it incorporated, you know, all the, the trappings of the internet, the, the cat photos, you know, every, you know, everything that you would, you know, you would expect to be in a nice little viral video was in there, was in their video. It was, it was, it was long, it was a nice little, nice little picture and it did really, really well for them. So that's, that was, that was one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, Squatty Potty, Squatty Potty, I think, did well on the back of the Shark Tank, Shark Tank success. Right. Um, and they actually run, ran tremendous amounts of ads against that video as well. Right, right. And they use that kind of shock factor humor of, like, if you actually look at the way that video was made, that that was, like, it's a very, it wasn't by chance that mm-hmm. they went. Yeah. They, spent, they spent a really large amount of money yeah. making that. Work. Right, I, I I could imagine, yeah, for for sure. He actually built a mechanical unicorn. Okay, wow, <laughs> yeah, I know that wasn't cheap. <laughs> so, so 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 for for any of these videos, I mean, they, they are, they are the, the ones that you could say go traditionally viral, which is you know, millions and millions of views. They are really, really, really well thought through videos and campaigns that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah, that is true, and I think what you mentioned as far as one key element that I've seen in a lot of just um, advertising and really commercial advertising, you can you can definitely learn a lot from these big companies that that actually produce commercials and you know kind of take elements from what they do um, into put into your own video. One big thing is the shock factor. I see so many ad campaigns and, and commercials these days where they're pushing that shock factor because especially these days when people are so accustomed to just skipping through ads or forwarding through ads or 
or just tuning out doing a commercial, the shock factor, um, you know, element is something that really pulls people. I'm, I'm thinking of some the ads that Geico runs, and you know, they're <laughs> they're notorious for doing the shock factor ads. The the one that they did where um, it shows the woman. Um, I think she's getting a massage, and then they show the window, the screen kind of pushing over, and then the whole room kind of gets tumbled over. And you, when you first look at that, you're like, wait, what the, what the hell is going on here? Everything is toppled over, and then the whole screen um, opens to just, you know, their Geico logo, because their, um, their whole thing was, um, you know, the limited amount of time there. And uh, so things like that, I think, is, is really key. And you have to be mindful of the fact that people are so conditioned these days, and so... Um, impatient um, and not going to really sit for just a, a traditional video unless you catch them right there at the beginning and have something captivating to pull them in then I think you may lose them they will tune out or just click away exactly you want to you really capture them and hook them with that first couple seconds yeah that's that is truly key you can stop scrolling right 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 uh, yeah, and so, so David, yeah, I appreciate everything that you have uh, provided to our, to our listeners. You've provided a wealth of information on, on how to get started with video marketing, and I know um, it's going to go a long way amongst our listeners. And one of the things that I've, I've always liked to do now is uh, kind of switch gears and just find a little bit more about yourself. Um, that I always ask my guests, what's, uh, what's one thing that you think our audience would be surprised to know about you? Surprised to know about me? Yeah. Good question. So I'm outside of business, um, um, I'm I'm someone who likes to stay pretty healthy, so I, I'm actually training for an Ironman right now. Oh, okay. So I bike, swim, and run probably too much for my own good. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, it's it's always a good time. Okay, great. That that is awesome. Yeah, those things are intense. I think I've, I've watched a, a few of those several years ago. They televised one of those, and those things. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, it's it's yeah. intense. It's, it, the one I'm doing is actually in Maryland. Uh, okay. So it's, it's you do for those of you who don't know Ironman, you swim 2.4 miles. You bike 112 miles and then you run 26.2. Wow! Uh, all back to back, you have about 17 hours to do it. Okay. Um, and then, then your day's wrapped up. So, um, you know, I've kind of been on this little journey to, to do that. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Okay, great. That's awesome. Well, I wish you well with that. I know um, it takes an intense amount of training to get to the point where your your, your body is just, you know, at a at a point where it, it can handle all of that. Uh, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know when I hit that point. <laughs> okay, great. Sounds good. Definitely keep us posted. Uh, well, David, yeah, well, thanks again for everything that you've shared. Now, if our audience wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do it? Sure. Um, just reach out through um, our, our website. I'm going to give you guys the Flixation website. Um, so it's flixation.io, F L I X A T I O N.io. Um, and just reach out to us through there. Uh, there's chat right on the site. Um, and for, for your audience, I guess, um, I can give you guys like two free editing hours if you want to try out. So just plug in the code Omnistar and we'll, uh, we'll hook you guys up with some editing, um, to get, to get whatever you guys need edited. Okay, great. Thank I appreciate that bonus to our listeners. I, I know that, um, they'll take advantage of that. Yeah. And ed- ed- editing hours are like 35 bucks each. So it's like 70 bucks for free. So okay. I hope you guys can take advantage of it. Okay, great. That sounds like a great deal. Um, All right, David. Well, thanks again for joining us here on the e-commerce marketing podcast. We appreciate your time and your information on digital marketing. You have a great day. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. Do you need to get more feedback and reviews from your customers and improve your customer retention? We have made it easy to do all of this with our advanced customer feedback software. Just visit getosi.com forward slash feedback and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com forward slash feedback.